Who's loving you? I don't wanna know right now. Who's loving you? Who's touching you? I don't wanna know right now. Who's What's up, guys? What's I'm up? Tatiana. What up? Who who are who are these fellas? DVBBS, but more specifically, Dubs. Uh, I'm Alex. I'm Chris. Chris. Chris Chronicles. And these guys, I feel like, are going to be a little bit of trouble for us today. You should never no. have brought us on. So thank you guys for watching. If you're watching, you're watching on Twitch. If you're listening, you're listening on Dash Radio. We're kind of everywhere. <laughs> dope. Um, are you guys familiar with Twitch? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's pretty dope. Um, we're actually awesome. on the homepage right now. So say hello to everybody watching. Shout out Twitch. Do you guys game? Um, we should Hell be gaming. No. We should be gaming more. Do you game? No, I don't game. I don't well, game. If you did game, what game? Would it be like a shooting game? No, it would be like something stupid like basketball? Mario Brothers. No. Yeah, no. I, I, I'm a gentle I soul. I go to Dave and Buster's. Yeah, like, and like I'll play it, that. I'll, in I'll university, like all my that. boys would be playing like Mario Kart. I'm like, no, that's what are me. you doing? Like, kind soul. Like, I don't want to shoot things. I don't oh, want to yeah. bomb things. I just want to like be in a cart and yeah. princess outfit. Call it a day. Yeah, what, I like what if stimulates. you have to throw like you know a banana at some fool that's beating you in a I race? I would throw would a casual banana. All right. Well, There's I gotta, nothing I gotta, wrong with it. a lot about your personality right there. A banana never killed anyone, right? Facts. Actually, you don't know that. We don't. We don't know what kind of banana you're working um, with. But let's move on. Yeah. Guys, we're here for a reason. You two are blowing the fuck up right now. Thank you. And I'm kind of obsessed. I was. I went through a wormhole watching all your music videos, which are pretty, really yeah. cool. I'm so glad that you guys make music videos because a lot of people don't do that anymore. And I'm like, why? What a missed opportunity. Yeah, no, they don't make videos anymore. Some people don't. They yeah, think it's no. too expensive. And it like to me that it a is, music though. video makes me connect to a we song. We used to spend like we like sometimes we'd put some money in videos and now we're just like concentrate on being more creative, creative for sure, instead like, of like. But, you know, we 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 are those artists that, you know, we love being a part of the whole process, you know, down to the artwork of what the new song is going to be down to you know, directing and producing the music video. So mm -hmm. that's been a big part of like our, our rise. Yeah, we do it all. <laughs> well, there's longevity in that, I think, because uh -huh. if you are a part of everything, you, your value add is more, right? So you're not having somebody write all your shit and design all your shit. Right. It's like people need you. To reach their own for sure. But there's, there's definitely, you know, there's a lot of artists that kind of, they get lost in things like that and they have management or labels kind of, you know, directing them in a million different directions. And I feel like people can see through that nowadays, you know, they, yeah. if, if you're doing it like, you know, authentically and it's coming from like your own kind of vision and whatever you got going on, then people. Authenticity is something that I talk about with a lot of musicians that come in here because Definitely. we do have that issue with there's a lot of great things that come with a label, right? You've got the label money, you've got the label connects, but a lot of times it feels like you get put in a box and they kind of want to shape you into something. So a lot right. of people are taking the indie route now. Um, how did you guys decide what route you wanted to take? I think like deep in our core, we'll always be indie. Like mm -hmm. no matter what deals we do as musicians or producers or songwriters, it always comes down to the core that we've started as a punk rock band when we're 13 years old, doing it yourself, DIY. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that was instilled in us. And it just to this day, you know, seven years later with dubs, you know, we're still doing it ourselves. Having these partners is allowing the music to reach, you know, different continents and different places that, you know, building teams is just a part of the game and stuff. And sometimes yeah. the teams, they understand your vision and they're, you know, they're always adding to it or sometimes they hold it back a bit. Mm -hmm. But I think we uh, we have a clear picture of like what our, our next year is always going to be. So did you guys have a clear <clears throat> picture on what your brand would be? Because a lot of people talk about what's your brand, what's your brand, like what image are you trying to put out there? There's Instagram, there's all these things that yeah. you can heighten your visibility on. Did you guys have to sit down and be like, all right, this is like the brand we're going for. We're gonna stay away from this type of content because everyone's looking at Instagram. You guys have a lot of followers. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we don't abuse that platform at all. You know what I mean? Like even recently we were talking about kind of you know, posting when it's needed, posting to update fans and, and monumental moments in our career. But we don't need to, like, abuse the fact that we can post, you know, a million times a day. Yeah. Um, not saying it's a bad thing at all. It's just it's just an approach that we've been doing in terms of our brand. We've always known what what we are. We're brothers. Right. You know what I mean? So like when even even that alone is just like two brothers as a brand in itself. Right. You know what I mean, so we just we just 
thought, you know what, let's be as raw and or as organic as possible. Let's make our music as organic as possible. And, you know, it just connects with people that want to, like, you know, yeah. connect with us. So you guys started at 13 <laughs> punk rock, right? Yeah. And you've evolved so much since then. What would you describe now as your lane? Or do you even, do you think you created your own lane in a way? Um, I think we created our own lane. I think we have a, a specific lane in the electronic world, but... For the last year and a half, a main focus for Dubs and ourselves as producers and songwriters has been opening the doors and working with, you know, people that are just out of the electronic lane, you know, mm -hmm. working with different pop stars and working with different rappers. And, you know, we've uh, we've had a really crazy year, like half on tour, half in the studio. Yeah. And we're sitting on about 40 records, all different genres of music. Right now? Yeah, right now. Um, when are we going <coughs> to... Different we gonna project... <coughs> What? No, yeah, we we have we have a bunch of stuff that you know That's a we're lot. sitting on. Yeah, we we wanted to start January 2019 off with like a we want to have the whole year laid out in front of us, oh, and wow. that's kind of like what we got to right now. So now it's gonna turn into the visual and the creative aspect with mm -hmm. that stuff and, and wrapping touring. that up. Yeah, when when you're doing it all, it's like it, it's finding the right balance. You know what I mean? You're you're touring, you're gone away from home, away from the studio you know, for two, three weeks at a time. In Europe, we did eight weeks, and then you have to come home and, you know, like, you filter what records you've been working on for the last few months and what ones you want to finish and who you're going to When do you try. rest? Never. Really? No. Lately, we've been resting. Lately, we, you know, we, like I said, it's about balance, and lately we found, we found that balance. Mm -hmm. Before, it was, like, 200 shows a year, like, get in the studio, you're kind of, like, jet-lagged in the studio, you're, yeah. like, in weird hours, 6 a.m. in the studio, like, then, you know, things kind of wither away and fall apart, so it's, you yeah. know, we just found that balance, and we're, we're sticking with it, and it's great. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's take it back to you growing up. Did you know that music was the path that you wanted to take? Uh-uh. At a certain point, that was later on in life, though. Soccer was a huge part of our life. We always played on the same team. Interesting. Like the highest level you could play in um, in Canada. Um, our parents are both European, so we lived in Greece and Holland as kids. So that's and, like, cool. Our grandfather or Opa played like semi pro soccer and pro pro soccer. So we love soccer. Yeah. So uh, that's cool. I bet you guys didn't know that. No. So yeah, you guys so could have been like all star athletes. Yeah. If we grew up in uh, Europe, like our whole life, so we'd a hundred percent be playing soccer. I mean, at least I would. Alex. Alex was also great. I don't know if he had, the, he always played on my team and there was a lot of politics soccer like there is in everything. So his position, the coach played, his, uh, the coach's son played. So sometimes like he would, but the chemistry was me and Alex, like when his son would be on. Do you guys like, still right, play right. soccer? Yeah. I mean, we, 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 we started playing it. like pickup games lately around like LA. Let me like, ask by you the something. Beach and stuff, if you could win the world cup or get a Grammy today, which Definitely one? Definitely a Grammy, honestly. I knew like, you would say that. I just wanted to see if soccer, soccer was still oh, we like. Gotta we got do both. Chris, Chris will leave. I, I would say Grammy. I mean, soccer I like is instilled in us both. as well, but I mean, they're so they're so related. You know, soccer and like it's both rhythm in a way. So it's kind of crazy. Good point. Yeah, but, very good point. But for us, I mean, at least me personally, I feel like the last like few years has been have been like very dedicated towards this like this thing called dubs which is just it's another language called music and it's it reaches different you know cultures all over the world and it's like yeah. a, it's crazy to watch it unfold we've been blessed to travel to a lot of places and experience these cultures firsthand so that's a huge blessing in its own music brought us to like 65 countries what has been your favorite country that you guys have south visited? africa I australia love south africa. Yeah. all the farthest places are the coolest yeah so yes. it kind of sucks getting Facts. there but when you get there you're like I should get it all right, guys. Well, so let's talk to some of the, the people who are watching right now. What is what is some advice you would give somebody? You guys have seen a lot of success, but obviously you've worked very, very hard to get to where you are. It's it, You have a lot. You have a huge following. Your videos get millions of views, but it didn't all start out that way. Yeah, so yeah. what advice would you give somebody who is trying to break into mm. what I consider one of the hardest industries Absolutely. to break into? I would say patience is yeah. number one. Um, and Crit, like just feedback like if you're showing p your friends like music and they're like this sucks don't be like no you suck <laughs> like yeah. just maybe just taking an advice and then try a different genre or just yeah, but it's just oh it has to be something that you like because if it's not something that you truly enjoy at the same time it's never gonna really be 
authentic like we were talking about earlier yeah so but you know just experimenting with different sounds what's modern what's been done and just making your own kind of blend of something that's that's new mm-hmm. like chris said you got to actually love it like i feel the moment we decided to make music you know like 110 percent of our life you know what i mean like there's there's a lot more to than just all like the amazing concerts and people think you know like all this crazy shit happens as a musician and it does but you're also sacrificing a lot of things along the way yeah and you gotta you gotta know and you guys are so young so you, you sacrificed a huge chunk of like adolescence basically yeah, right family you know what i mean like friendships you know prom we, probably we moved we <laughs> moved from chris drove a car we moved to la with a thousand dollars in our pocket yeah i had like a, i had like a old had like jetta a, he drove it from toronto for in three days that's crazy. And we just like, we just what trapped did your family, it out. What, your family saw you take this bold move. What were they thinking? Our mom definitely saw the vision. You yeah. Know? Still um, thought it was far fetched, very like, but she just knew that, especially Alex. Alex had like this, Alex just had the vision. And I was always kind of like, listen to people like, you know, it's very unrealistic, like the chances of this, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I'm like, what am I going to do? Something that I don't like in life. Mm-hmm. I need to do something that I enjoy, and that's the only way you're going to really pursue your dreams. You either boss up or get bossed around. Yeah. But sometimes when you're on on the path to bosshood, you know, bosshood. you fall, you stumble, things happen. How do Absolutely. you pick yourself back up? Those are the most important moments. Yeah. You, Those you are the realize. moments where you're like, wow, I wasn't thinking straight. Wow, I fucked up. Wow, that was a huge sign. Mm-hmm. There's so many signs. All Does these something signs. Something stick out are, for you guys is like um, an aha moment. Just where working like, with certain people, you know what I mean? Like we have a manager now that's been with us like from basically the beginning, but that was one of the signs that was like this was actually a good sign. This mm-hmm. was like he's he's the one. Him and his dad are like the ones to build this team with, and you guys kind of like you're in a circle. Four of you, five of you, six of you are like close friends and stuff, and. You don't let anyone get in that circle in a way that yeah. it, like it can affect you mentally or it can affect your creative aspect. But just kind of like watching out for who you're building relationships with, watching out who you're building creative partnerships with, you know, because a lot of people... Don't, don't rush to sign anything. Yeah, that's why I said Never. patience. Because you're yeah, excited yeah. and you're like, oh, they want me. Our let me biggest sign. mistakes were, were like, you know, I dropped out of school and I was like, wow, like my parents think I'm a huge loser. I got to like show them that I signed a record deal or something, but so I, rushed. I rushed it so hard and I wanted it so bad in the beginning that it was something that, you know, it was a mess that had to be cleaned up. A few but that's years very later. human of you because a lot of people, when they see somebody pursuing a dreamlike path, right? Yeah. Like everyone's like, oh, and then you've put this like crazy pressure on yourself. Like something needs Absolutely. to happen now so people yeah. don't like laugh I mean, at me. Just like any other industry, it's like a yeah. lot of fucked up shit that happens. And like not anyone who's taking you out and wine and dining you really has your best interest no. in, involved, you know? Or I mean? a lot of people make you promises and they fall through and Especially you get excited. Especially in this town. This town, this oh, town yeah. is like people from all over the world have kind of like shifted into this one little bubble called Hollywood or West right. Hollywood or mm-hmm. North Hollywood, whatever, California. And, but not even California because the rest of California seems like, you know, Pretty they, chill. they got their shit on lock and yeah. they're just like, they know what's yeah, real California. And shit. Yeah, like West right. Hollywood is like where like all these like, you know, freaks, good freaks, bad freaks, all kind of like are in one location. And I don't know, there's a lot of people here with just like, they just talk so much. There's a watch lot out of for talking. talkers. Just watch there's out for talkers. Lot of the, a lot watch of out for butt sniffers. Yeah, they're called butt sniffers. Butt sniffers are the worst. <laughs> yes. You know? For sure. Well, they do Pretenders. say, you know, the great philosopher Lil Wayne once said, uh, oh, yeah. real, G's, real G's move ah. in silence like lasagna. It's one of my favorite uh, Why is lyrics. lasagna silent? I don't so, real G's don't move that. in silence right. like lasagna. So, if you spell yeah. out lasagna, oh, wow. the G is now silent. Now I get it completely. He's now a little slow. Is your mind blown? No, but I, I so got little the first Wayne time. is is quite I'm the philosopher. Slow. No, it's okay. It's I rap. also he's a little high. <laughs> no, it's everyone is. Um, no, but seriously, when I, it's the it's the truth. Like people who are constantly announcing things are doing more announcing and less move making. Oh, I've yeah. found like the bigger talk, the more you talk, the less I think is happening. You just um, know now good, when there's a good, talk in a yeah. room. You're it's like, good to, for people to think you haven't been up to anything. Then it's just like. Hi. Yeah, you exactly. Know, and they're like, fuck. Exactly. I'm mad again. Have you guys, um, but 
with all the the shady people, there are a lot of really great people yeah, in Hollywood. Yeah, shout out to them, like good vibes. So, is there anyone like <laughs> along? Uh, not butt sniffers. Shout out, not the butt sniffers. <laughs> um, is there anybody along the way that you guys really um, can say had a had a hand in your career and and helped shape you and Josh it, it Herman, could be your Steve family. Herman, our mom, mm -hmm. James over there. His name's Lumpy. What's up, for, Lumpy? For one year, I, I just I call knew him as Lumpy, and then someone was like. <laughs> Go tell James to come really over here. I feel really weird that like, I just called him James. No, no, no. It's 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 a given. Okay. You have to say it. So I mean, so you you've had some good crew. experiences with people that have been. <laughs> yeah, for um, sure. I mean, some great experiences. Yeah. It's like sometimes a, a negative situation just seems so negative, and then when you look back on it, you're like, wow, that made me so much stronger, and now I know, and now I'll never make that mistake again, and I won't yeah. be so trustful, and I won't. I'll take more advice, and I won't rush. And you guys are like, obviously you started off so young. So these are lessons that obviously had to be learned. It's Absolutely. not like you, you're idiots. You no, were just no, it's, 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 it's all it's trial and it. error. And it's like, I don't know. You're just, you, when you're 16, you think a certain way. When you're 18, you think a certain way. When you're 20, you're getting, it's like, I just turned 27. And I think it was about eight months ago where I was like something like, I just clicked where I don't like, I'm just mature now like that's just, it just what it you is. just woke up uh, and you were yeah, like jesus just, i'm here yeah i mean dude i cook all my own food now really like, you didn't even go to grocery i don't even stores. cook my own food that's you know, fantastic like, fuck uber eats really what about postmates uh fuck them too man fuck, <laughs> fuck all of you They're you don't sponsor us I'll, I'll still take a I'll, fuck you until I'll you take a sponsorship <laughs> don't give it to him We'll we'll take the sponsorship. But Don't sue me, please. <laughs> I love Uberies and no, Postmates. No, seriously, it's great. I have a lot of issues with Postmates, but we'll talk about that on another show. Let's quickly talk about 2019 because I yes. know a lot of people are excited. You're going to be going on tour, I'm yep. sure. Um, do you kick off the tour at a certain time in the year? Um, I think we're going to do something mid January. Mid January. I think we're going to start up our tour dates. We got we got like three more shows left this year. We kind of really wanted to. You know, just finish these last few weeks in the studio strong without okay. any kind of like, you know, travel interruptions and stuff. But we're doing Chicago, Atlantic City, and then we're doing a hometown show in Toronto on December so 16th. Nice. With Black Bear and Murder Beats. It's going to be sick. So that is, shouts it, that's got to be like an incredible feeling to go back home and be able to do a show like that. No, yeah. it's, it's going to be it's crazy. Horrible. It's horrible. It's the be, worst. Yeah, it sucks. Do your friends come and check it out? No, like we have no friends. No, yes, you no do. No one likes us. <laughs> yes, come on. All your friends from high school no. show up. They don't? Uh, no, nah, we have a lot of friends from high school, but... We just know. got, like, the main squad, and that's who shows up. Is that the and same then squad The rest day is one? sold out, so just, like, we'll just mm. stay in the back, and you guys just enjoy the damn show. Oh. You stay dig. in the back. DC in the house. I like that. That's me. Yeah. DC. Are you guys Tupac or Biggie? Both. Um, Tupac. No, you have to pick one. Tupac. Really? Uh, I'm Biggie. Fuck. I'm a Biggie kind of girl. I'm so 50-50, like... I like Tupac's Biggie's attitude. Can't do that, though. That's bullshit. You can't do Biggie's that. like, you know, you like, now the East Coast is going to hate Tupac me. Tupac is so, like, like, he's more, like, spiritual and, like, political. And, like, Biggie's like, yo, smoke and Biggie, weed. Biggie's and someone you want to be friends like, with, yeah, Biggie's right? Definitely yeah, definitely. Like, like, you'd want to hang out the with blunt, him. You know? Yeah. But then Tupac, mm. you piss him off and you're scared. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I'd be I mean, walking I'd be scared of both of them. You'd be scared of Biggie? I feel like he's, like, the nicest teddy bear. That's what I would imagine. Mm. Did you guys listen to that growing up? Was Definitely a lot worse. of hip hop. Of course. What about rock? Like, what was some of your favorite yeah, a lot alternative of rock bands? We grew up on like Nirvana mm -hmm. and like Foo Fighters and stuff, and like grunge stuff. A lot of punk bands. Mostly, mostly punk. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, no all, effects, no like effects, bad and bad rains, um, and then like Minor Threat, like really like eighties punk. Yeah. And, um, like thrash. We were just like Thrasher kids, you know. Love I mean? Rush. Like, just, I like, mean, I love Neil Peart as a drummer, especially. Yeah. Not love so stirring much. shit up. Well, you like stirring shit. Just, we I, come from like I could tell the second you walked in. Live shows yeah, where like engine, everyone's huh? on the stage moshing and like then the fucking there guy like no hits rules. them with the guitar or something and then they're like, there's no, that's not cool. <laughs> you you <laughs> would not. I don't see. You're I'm like the too drummer, sweet. so I was just used to play my drums like just sit in the back and I used to just wear play boxers. The damn beat. Boxers because like I used to rehearse like in my boxers. So okay. like when I played shows, I wanted to Gotta be, be like, comfortable. Yeah, comfortable and like mm -hmm. as uh yeah as like chilled out and as how i practiced were you so, ever worried that something might right shift? no i have a my small pants, penis my <laughs> <laughs> he said it not me i mean uh. my pants Should we wrap this up my, now? My did, we pants. <laughs> did, did we cover everything my pants ripped that was the once last thing on the list. my pants ripped once we, in australia yeah. and i wasn't wearing boxers 
We were skateboarding in like uh, Malaysia. <laughs> okay. That was and I went to bad. grind the rail, but I grinded my ball sack. <laughs> That's fucked up. Guys, that sounds like, like it hurt. I feel like w- <gasps> took a huge okay. deep. <laughs> but then my yeah. But then what? But that, what's but that? What's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> Continue. On very story. honest. No. Very honest. Tea unfiltered. Very you guys honest. just had like back to back like six stories it, within the same region. Yeah. We're brothers, man. You're like, you don't you even know? understand the story. But you guys made it through. You're right now. You used now? to cross words. So cool. Are you guys cool now? Yeah, we're great. Everything's right. cool? We got it out of our system. No, but are I wonder you cool? how pissed her man oh, is. Oh, yeah. No, we're, we're You're both good? Yeah. We're great. Okay. Serious? Are we done? <laughs> I, I keep like wanting to ask you questions and then we get totally yeah, derailed. Like, that's just how it is. How I long mean, are these interviews usually? They're usually about 30 minutes. Okay. Lit. Um, let's see how long we've been going. 32 minutes. Wow. We're two minutes over. Wow. No, but we're fine. You didn't even are you know, guys good you didn't, on time? You didn't even know that yeah, we were good. two minutes over like because you were just so engaged. No, in, like, seriously, this. every good interview that we have is exactly the way that we're doing it. It's like the worst is when you interview someone and they give you one word answers. Mm-hmm. You want to hear the story about how yeah, your balls how, got detached. No, I'm not detached. <laughs> just grinded. It's, she took it to a hole. I still feel bad. I mixed up the ethnicities part. Oh, man. I'm sorry. No, don't. Oh you shouldn't feel bad. God. She said detached. I didn't actually like, mix no. it up. I knew what I was talking it's about. It's like just detached. on the rail. No longer a part of your body. It's yeah. cool. We don't judge here. Oh, you're fucking funny, Seriously. Dude. Um, all right, guys. So let's, let's quickly talk to some of the aspiring musicians out there. If they are, let's say they don't have any connections in music and they don't have, you guys didn't either, make some, actually, man. right? What the fuck? What's, what's the advice you would give? Because you didn't have a daddy some. in the industry. You guys no. made it, you we know. We were literally just dropping off. Like, we would go to every uh, label because back then you had CDs, obviously. So we'd yep. go to we every like label. Press kits and shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Press kits, making our own press kits. We get escorted going, out of the building yeah, by security. Going around, just videotaping, like, just finding, like, someone on the street and, like, make it seem like they knew who we were and they were cool and like videotape it, but they really didn't know anything <laughs> about us. And That's really yeah, smart. It was, it was, We've been doing that since like we were literally 14. Did you guys like start uploading videos on YouTube? Was that at all a part of the plan? MySpace. We were still yeah. on the MySpace, MySpace. MySpace. Yeah, I conquered MySpace days for sure. MySpace yeah. was a huge for musicians. That was like like I don't three know. People bands always went tell us MySpace. like give advice. It's like, oh, fuck man, if we didn't make it, we'd be like giving you no advice. But, but every, I, mean, I feel like everyone's advice it, is different, it, right? Didn't, not still have pretty bad advice. I mean, I don't think you have bad advice. I think that it's, I really love hearing from people who were scrappy and made their way to the top because so many people have people making moves for them and yeah. people don't get realize. discouraged. Like, if one yeah. little bad thing happens, yeah. like we were almost gave up at one point when we signed that really bad deal. But then, like, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be like the right people will come into your world and just mm-hmm. like envision it. I mean, I don't know if that really works, but it's worth a try. Just what? don't think negatively. Yeah. Because it's better to think positively than think negatively, even if it doesn't, maybe it's fate. I don't fucking know. No, I think that the way you think very, about things become very real. Very yeah. Yeah. Like, seriously. I, I, it might be true. Thoughts become things. Oprah yeah. said it. I mean, um, you, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's true. I should get it. Oh, should get it. <laughs> okay, wait. So I actually had a question oh, sorry, for you. Bad. Was I'm there sure. a moment where you guys, or have you not reached that? Because everybody I talk to has a different answer, but was there a moment when you guys were like, we've made it? Was there a, a we've made it moment? Yeah, when we can buy our mom a crib. That's the, when you made it. Have you been able to but do that? It's yeah. like, you so know when I, was that for you? We're in a car. And yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know, three, we four years ago. We still haven't made it. So like, it was a financial we're thing for you? Achievers. We haven't made it in our heads yet. You know what I mean? Obviously, that was a moment where it's like, like, okay. You're never going to feel that way. Say you're playing yeah. professional soccer or something. You're playing like third division. Like you're still playing pro soccer, but like yeah. still one day you, you want to go play like division one you know what i mean there's so, always like, gonna be yeah. a, another mountain and like climb. you can yeah. stay always. in like in a in a lower team and be like the the star on the team yeah. or play at the higher league and maybe i don't know you know what i mean like but you're still playing at that level if that no, makes no, any I sense totally you know? yeah i mean we, we've made it with our music but there's still so many mountains for us to climb you know whether it's conquering other genres and like our goal for next year is to have one song you know with dubs like on the dance and the pop charts like really crushing on the top 100 Mm -hmm. as well as a hip-hop song Mm -hmm. that's also on the like the urban charts and the hip-hop charts that is also top 100 and kind of you know just just set 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 different goals that are attainable and like i don't know it sounds like like you guys are well on your way to that hopefully you know sounds like it all just suck no 
No, you guys are so talented. I mean, you have so much music coming out. You're going on tour. It sounds like you guys never stop working. You have a lot of work ethic, which obviously if you guys are taking anything away, that's that's yeah. the key, right? Like we're just And our balance hard. is on point with our with our personal lives, our health, you know what I mean? Our relationship. Yeah, eat it's healthy like, because yeah. if you don't, you'll probably just look like poop. And nobody wants to look like poop. Uh-uh. Certainly not. Um, so, okay, you guys, so where do you see yourselves five years from now? Let's put it out there in the universe. What's what's the big... It's like, and, and the winner is Dubs. Yeah. No, that's before five years. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's next year. I five, think Five years, like, I think we would love to comfortably be able to continue touring in, you know, every part of the world that we've already been to, you know, but from South America to Asia, Europe, North America. Like, we want to still be able to have kids that have grown with us through this crazy roller coaster of, you know, our career and are still five years later coming out to support and hear where we currently are musically. Mm -hmm. We want to expand our live show into like a lot more of a live show with like bands and, mm -hmm. you know, crazy, like, you know, even just choreographed stuff and, um, you know, kind of also be looked at as guys that aren't just, really like fun on stage with the electronic and DJ aspect. We can also, you know, work with orchestras and, you know, just score a movie, something like that. You know, like, like there's so many things that are yeah. still in our, like in our future pipeline. And work with younger artists because I mean, there's a lot of talented people out there and sometimes the they don't really get the chance because the big guys Absolutely. don't really give them a chance. So that'd are, be cool. Are there any good young artists right now? We love to talk about new artists on, on our show. We actually usually open the show with a signed young artist who hasn't broken yet. Wow. That's how we usually start every single wow. show because we like to give new artists a platform because we realize a lot of labels put those people to the back burner. Mm -hmm. um, we did not do that this week. Our singer was sick. But what is there somebody that you guys are really loving right now that you could give us some We wrote a song to? that went platinum with a girl named Gia Coca. Okay. And we've been reworking with her for the last few weeks mm -hmm. and I feel like when we first did this song I knew that there was something there that was like really special and and she was so talented but it was her first rodeo mm -hmm. like with the record doing well and you yeah. know all of a sudden she has a song with 100 million streams and she's still this girl from Holland who mm -hmm. is you know writing in different studio sessions and bedrooms or whatever and a year and a half later, it's like crazy because we're we're working with her and like I feel like she found like who she is as an artist and like wow. just to see how much more like energy she can bring to like the table, just not being shy and not thinking that people are gonna say that like no to what she's doing, you know. So Gia Coca is definitely one. Gia Coca, guys. Yeah, Coca. Check Coca. Gia Coca. Coco. Check her out. Um, you guys are collaborating with her as well. Yeah, we're just we're writing a bunch of stuff together right now. Whether it's whether it's for other people or cool. together and stuff. Yeah, we're we're doing that. a lot. We're just building our catalog. You know, writing a lot of stuff that you know might not even end up as a dub song, but we would love to. You know, also just be part of the the process of the credits and sending. I love it off. when established artists like you guys give other people a platform. That's really yeah, dope. And I think sure. that's a really good way to pay it forward. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Yes. Everyone should do that. Yeah. Everyone should do that. Yeah. yeah. Little Wayne. Yeah. Come on our show. Yeah, little, little Wayne. Yeah. You so know? be yeah. friends with us. I just really want to be his friend. It's yeah, like, that's my, but if you were to ask me my bucket list of five years, it'd be like, he'd my bet. Be I feel my like these friend. mics, you can like almost sound like little Wayne. If you're like, I'm like the, the, the. A little. That how he sounds. <laughs> yeah. He, he, oh, no, like, he, on a, a mic, I feel like that kind of ribbit. <laughs> That's not ribbit. what I was expecting you to do. <laughs> Nobody was. You guys got auto-tune on this? <laughs> no. Do we? Do we have auto-tune? Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Little nope. tune cheat. JK. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So let everybody know where they can find your music and how they can keep in touch Spotify, with you. Spotify, Apple Music. Go check out Dubs, D-V-B-B-S. We have the Visa U. It's very complicated and annoying to explain it's to people. It took five BBS. years and it's still a thing. We, I love it. Yeah, it's like. It looks good. It's unique. Yeah. It when is you look real. at it, it's, it's unique. It's I like guess. Bogard with a V, you know, mm -hmm. but it's a U. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if it's there was unique. ever a regret, that was it. Really? No, I'm joking. No, no. We great. love it. We love it. I have it tatted it's on It's a big so. mind fuck for people. So it's like they talk. You're like, dude, what are you saying? Especially in France. Oh, really? <laughs> no. Bay, 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 bay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so much fun. I hope you will. You guys come back in the new year when you drop all Please your new have songs. Us back. Yeah. I would love to have you guys back. Definitely. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, I'm joking. 
I thought we we'll were best back. friends. This is we, really no, awkward. Good vibes. Can good someone vibes. Someone else finish the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, guys. interview we done. Thank you. DVBBS, you guys. They were so much fun. They're going to come back next year, so you already promised on camera. Yeah, we're here. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. Nah, hey. I got you. Um, we loved having you guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. Whoa. Whoa. Hey. Ooh. 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 I went <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs>